Meanwhile, it's been a tough time to be in real estate. No one knows if prices are going to rise and when sales will pick up again. And several of you might be stuck with the investments you need to liquidate. But selling your apartment or unit may not be as easy as you think. We are getting a rising number of reports about developers using restrictive agreements to delay your sale. What are these methods and why are they doing this? Nikhil Narayan Sivdas has this report. 31-year-old Ashish Oja, first investor in property in Mumbai back in 2010. An experienced real estate investor, he sensed that the markets were going through a tough time and decided to sell his flat. I was getting a good, uh, decent kind of uh, appreciation. Uh, I can say if you ask in figures, so close to around 25 to 30% ka mujhe, I was getting the appreciation in there. As the sale process came to a close, the builder stepped in and asked Ashish to pay transfer charges in order to sell the flat. And he said that, you know, uh, these are the things due to which you will, you will have to pay a exit road kind of thing. There would be transfer charges, X amount of transfer charges. So I said, I mean, why? Why should I pay you? I mean, this is hardly, you know, two and a half, three years since I bought the flat. And now I'm making a profit of, let's say, 10 rupees, for example. Why I should pay you three rupees out of it? Transfer charges are illegal, especially once an agreement has been registered. But developers routinely demand this when a buyer is selling a flat. What's worse, there's no fixed amount and charges can range anywhere between 400 to 1500 rupees per square feet and even higher. If you refuse to pay, the developer won't give the No Objection Certificate or NOC which is essential to sell the flat. Then there's the lock-in period where you have to wait a specific amount of time before selling your house a condition that is easily misused. You could have a lock-in period, you know, anywhere from three years extending right up to possession. Now, possession could mean that if the buyer has bought in the pre-launch stage, he may have to wait anywhere between five to six years before he can sell off his apartment, which is a bit unfair and, and very, very one-sided. In certain cases, the lock-in periods could be even three years. But the clarity is not there whether it's three years from the date of booking or three years from the date of allotment, which could add another year to the lock-in period. So why are developers so determined to make it difficult for you to sell your house? Many investors are scared that the markets will fall further and are desperately trying to sell their flats, often at a discount. This is bad news for developers who may have unsold inventory in the project or area and they use lock-in periods to delay the sale until their own flats are sold. Transfer charges are then used to ensure that prices remain at the levels they desire which means an owner will find it difficult to sell below market rates. Which is why legal experts say it's better to ensure you're not bound by these conditions when entering into an agreement. Everybody knows that we are in a buyer's market today. Buyer, consumer is king. Intelligent purchaser should surely resist such kind of restriction in his letter of allotment or in his contract. And he should uh, tell a builder that I am not going to agree to th that I cannot sell or I must offer you to sell because this will be casting an unnecessary restriction or a limitation on my right to deal with my property and I am not going to be agreeable. No one is saying that a developer cannot sell his own units first, but such rampant misuse must be stopped. Developers cannot complain that no one trusts them when they are making such one-sided agreements that hold a homeowner hostage. So if you are planning on buying a new house, make sure you explicitly avoid such conditions in your agreement. From Mumbai, Nikhil Narayan Shivdas, NDTV.